So um, my only condition was it had to be a, 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 a book that served as a financial inclusion through cannabis guide um, to help people who don't have a million dollars from their friends and family, a Harvard MBA, a, a graduate degree from a, you know, an, an Ivy League school, uh, start a business. My name is Javier Hasse. Um, I'm from Argentina. I'm a cannabis focused reporter and writer, uh, book author. You can see my book back there. Um, currently, I serve as managing director for Benzinga Cannabis, which is a um, finance, media, and events focused company. And I'm the founder and CEO of El Planteo, which is a um, media outlet focused on cannabis, hemp, CBD, psychedelics, um, renewable energies. And, uh, I'm 30 years old now. Um, I got out of university uh, at age 22 and got a job writing about finance, you know, stocks, hedge funds, insider trading. Um, uh, one day an editor asked me if I was willing to write an article about cannabis or marijuana stocks and related plays, ways to invest and capitalize on what at that time was a very nascent industry, uh, something that was just popping up as, as a real thing, right? And we were seeing the first stock start a trade on, 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 on stock exchanges. Um, and actress and thought I, I decided to do it. And, you know, at the time it was quite the reputational risk. Um, so it, it basically meant, you know, risking, jeopardizing what to me was a great career, right? I was working for American companies, making U.S. dollars and traveling the world at, you know, age 24. Um, but you know what? I loved cannabis. He always did and, and, and um, decided to, to give it a shot and wrote one article. And that was basically it. I never looked back after that. Just people started reaching out with information, with data. And, you know, over time, I, I, I continued to write about cannabis and, and, and got a job at Benzinga. Um, and, and, and since, you know, since then had my cannabis focused articles published on, um, you know, Benzinga and Yahoo and CNN and Market Watch and Morningstar and uh, even Fox Business. They had a, a column on Playboy for a bit. I now contribute to Forbes. Um, and, um, you know, all of this work, um, along with, with, with work for cannabis specific publications like high times or dope magazine, um, helped me gain certain notoriety in the space. And when I was 27, I got a call from entrepreneur media, um, publishers of entrepreneur magazine and many others and they have this book division and they asked me if I was willing to write a book on how to start a cannabis business. Um, and my response was, I am definitely down. Do you know I'm, I'm, I'm 27 <laughs> and they go and, and they said, yes, we've seen your work. We know you, you have a, a good Rolodex. So, you know, we'd like you to write this book. So, um, my only condition was it had to be a, 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 a book that served as a, financial inclusion through cannabis guide um, to help people who don't have a million dollars from their friends and family, a Harvard MBA, a, a graduate degree from a, you know, an, an Ivy League school, uh, start a business. Over the following two months, I, I called about a hundred people I knew who had uh, involvement in the cannabis space, whether it was the industry advocacy policy and ask them for tips and put together this book. Um, and it came out in 2018, um, sold out on, on pre-sale and then uh, went on to be the, the uh, number one bestseller in Amazon. I went back to, to Benzinga. I had taken a couple months off to write the book and, and 
uh, spoke with my boss and told them I think we should do a, a cannabis department, and then they were definitely on board. They were thinking about this before I even brought it up, and and we started hiring people and expanding our coverage and and hosting events, and you know it, it grew a lot to the point where where now we have almost. 40 people in some capacity working on cannabis initiatives at Benzinga. A few months ago, we, we discussed also getting into, into Spanish news. And, and so I had this project, this baby of mine with, with a friend, we had co-created it. Uh, and again, I brought it up with my bosses. I have this website called elplanteo.com. Uh, and, and he said, okay, let's do it. And now we've launched, uh, we're 60 days into into uh, operations. We published almost 300 articles on cannabis, CBD, hemp, psychedelics, culture, music, um, you know, and, and we've seen our, our content republished on Benzinga on Yahoo, on High Times, on Flipboard, on investing.com. Um, so it's, it's honestly, you know, thriving, going well, growing fast and same as I noticed with Benzinga and I noticed now with El Planteo, there's a big demand and need for serious cannabis focused news. Um, and so that's our mission, you know, to inform, to educate, and then sometimes why not entertain in, in, in tough times like these. Loved uh, cannabis since I was young. Um, and honestly, it's, it's about many things. It's about how it makes you feel. It's about the potential of the plant. It's about what it does for society. It's about what it can can do for society, right? That the many jobs it can create, the you know the the many economic and financial benefits it can bring to society, uh, how legalization can 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 to a certain extent make up for for many of the injustices that have been committed, you know, in the name. Of, of fighting cannabis over time and it, it's just you know one of these topics it's just pierces so many different arenas and areas of life um so that it's that right it's 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 kids medicating for epilepsy and it's grandmothers medicating for pain and everyone in between so it's it's one of these things it's one of these these things that just reaches and touches or it has the potential to touch everyone. And it's also a plan, which is crazy, right? It's, it's, it's nothing more than a plan. It's been vilified and, and stigmatized and criminalized for uh, decades. People always like to, to talk about the future of cannabis. And I think about this often. And, and to me, honestly, the future is legality, is regulation. There's no next big thing. One, I want the plant legalized and, and, and for people to be able to access it in many forms. We'll research, we'll discover uh, new uses for it. We'll discover, you know, many other ways to consume it, I'm sure. But, you know, if, if you ask me what's the future, the future is in legality and, and, and global legality. This will, be, this will become sooner or later and I really expect and, and hope it's rather sooner than later. A, a, a regular commodity where some countries produce the the, the inputs, the agricultural input, inputs at a lower cost, and, and and others process it, and 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 others make it into medicine, and others just sell it how it is, and 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 we'll see, of course, all of these ancillary businesses develop around the core business of selling cannabis, whether that software, or physical security, or or you know, investing in banking services or payments process. So what, what, what we do is, is address many of the topics and issues that are not addressed normally or, or frequently uh, by mainstream media. And, and many times when they are, they are treated as a novelty. You know, there's this giggle factor to it where people go like, ah, <laughs> they're talking about weed. And as I've mentioned, this is, 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 is something that generates jobs that can, can change the world in, in, in many ways. Um, so we focus on delivering that kind of information and then we focus on, on, on connecting 
good companies with with the investors and the people who can fund them who can actually enable them to pursue these projects these missions they have these you know noble objectives that they have and 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 you know for a cannabis business it's hard to raise money you can't go to a bank and ask for a loan you know in most cases so we tried it to help people reach these investors who are willing to put in the money to fund a cannabis business starting a company is never easy uh someone told me while writing the book if, if it was easy everyone would do it um but i don't know I'm, I, I focus on doing i focus on on on, on, on execution and and on on really having a team that loves what they do and they're happy with what they're doing when you're faced with a challenge that you cannot solve yourself go to someone who knows how to solve it and 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 ask for their help um and it's not like you're born with a network so cultivating a network of people and, and 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 honest authentic relationships with these people is key Right, because it's not like you can pick up and uh, the phone and call a random, you know, accountant and ask them for help. When it when it comes to cannabis, I think the largest one has been stigma. People not fully accepting what we're doing, and, but you know, as time goes by and society progresses and and people understand what cannabis is, all this is just disappearing and the, the people are coming to terms with the fact that cannabis is not inherently good nor bad it's it's just you know it just needs to be approached in the in the right way i think the hardest part of, of being an entrepreneur is being the ultimate responsible you know the the person who's ultimately responsible for everything people's jobs and livelihoods depend on you but th- that that I think is is really the the one caveat that I, I I would share with people when it comes to being a founder just be prepared to deal with the weight of you being responsible I think my my largest concern is always like just viability uh, I I want the business to always keep growing and and when you grow fast it's really hard to not disappoint people in the future. Um and it honestly that what what worries me what keeps me awake uh if anything is, is that you know being 100% sure that now and in the foreseeable future every one of the people in my team will have a job will have their salaries in their bank accounts on the first day of every month. You know those are things that I don't take for granted. The largest tip is just connect with people, reach out on LinkedIn uh, and on I don't know Twitter, whatever it is you use, uh try and and attend virtual events when when the world is back to normal, go to actual events, right? Meet the people ask them what they do get interested in their in their work in their products know what they what they do and and think of ways to actually collaborate um this is an industry that really does not conceive finance and business as a sum zero game where if i win you lose um it's more of an industry that loves this quote about uh a rising tide lifting all boats plan for 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 a you know different scenarios the the what does success look like what does a break even look like what does a failure look like you know always have enough money set aside for taxes um it's it i think that that's kind of where you know you you always get screwed as a first time entrepreneur and 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 not spending wisely and not managing your taxes and compliance wisely and especially in cannabis compliance is key um 
one mistake, uh, you know, on the on the compliance front, and, and by compliance I mean adhering to local laws and regulations, um, can cost you your entire business. So, you know, from the very start, I, I suggest you try and budget for a, a a lawyer and an accountant. The other big mistake I think I've made was, you know, assuming people would want to fund an idea, um, you need to put in actual legwork and, and, and have a, a minimum viable product, a proof of concept, uh, before you, you go out and, and, and claim that your idea and your product is great. Everyone can have an idea or anyone can have an idea um some are good some are bad but in the end it's all about how they're executed there's this very famous latin american author who said something i like very much about um ideas for books and content right and he said there's no such thing as good or bad topics but only good or way or, or bad ways of treating them but it's mostly about execution so go out and do it find out how to do it yourself ask your friends if they want help, ask your family if they can help, uh, and, and, and try and, again, come up with this mi like minimum viable product, something that shows that your idea can actually be a valuable product in reality. You're not market ready if you're not compliant with the laws, if you don't have a safe product. Uh, but you might be market ready, even if your product is not completely perfect the way you imagined it. So, you know, you can have the best product in the world, but if you don't market it and people don't know about it, you know, it, it's going nowhere. So maybe you spend five years developing the perfect product only to find out that people don't want it. And that has been the case, for instance, with many cannabis products, like some beverages, you know, they spent years developing a flavor and, and it turns out people don't like it. Honestly, good design and, 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 and a clean image shows a certain degree of professionalism. And that is, is super important, right? And in, in how it comes across. What do you want to show? What do you want to reflect? For El Planteo, for instance, my, my objective was to to generate you know confidence in people trust so that people you know looked at this website and 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 and, and conceived it as a traditional media outlet something they're used to seeing um and it would be very different it was if it was like a lifestyle focused website where probably you know it would prioritize say a nice landing video versus a layout where you can see the top eight news items of the day and this applies to your brand as well um and 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 the the applications you imagine you will be giving for instance your logos your colors uh, you know color is very important in what it, it transmits to people there's numerous studies on the feelings that each color generates in people uh so i suggest you look into that and and and, and figure out how you'd want your company to be identified and pick a color scheme around that and conceptualize it. There's concept to design uh, and there's value to design. Um, you can't thrive on design alone and you can probably thrive without it, but it really helps. It really helps to look serious and legitimate from day one. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning into the uh, Founder X series uh, by Design Hill. Hope to see you again soon and hope you get some good takeaways from this and the other great sessions that the Design Hill team has put together. Thank you for having me. So um, I'm, I'm the same in all social networks. My name is Javier Hase. That's J-A-V-I-E-R. 
H-A-S-S-E. You can Google me. It shows up with a little, you know, knowledge panel and all of my social media. I use the same handle everywhere. It's Javier Hasse all together. No underscores, no points, no anything. Just Javier Hasse.